In 1990, I met a very special man in Switzerland, Mr. Emil Scherer. Four years ago, Emil founded a Swiss health-related company, and its name was very appealing to me. Bodywell, promoting human's health. Mr. Scherer's philosophy was focused on improving human's health and reaching out to the poor. My journey for this discovery began three years ago when I traveled to Austria to meet with the widow of Walter Zapp, who was the inventor of this unique technology. A challenging journey of scientific investigation that was mind-boggling to the scientist. In fact, in June 2011, the World Trade Organization issued a warning that cell phone risk claims continuously fall upon deaf ears here in the United States. Still, few people will conclusively say that cell phones cause damage. I won't say that either. What I will say, however, is that if there were a way to significantly reduce the absorption rate of the electromagnetic radio waves into your body, regardless of the damage it may or may not be causing, that would be something, wouldn't it? Dr. Moshe Nat from Ariel University in Israel and Dr. Nashat Maze of Beaumont Health Systems in Michigan, they will take you through the steps we took and the results we found in the research and testing that was done. They will demonstrate all these results. You will also hear from Dr. Nancy Muller, a noted neurologist with successful practice in Englewood, New Jersey, who has found in her own work a possible connection between certain ailments and proximity to the mobile phones. So let me start. I will be speaking about electromagnetic waves penetration into the human brain. We all use the microwave oven, and in the microwave oven, as you can see here, the wavelength is about 12 centimeters. If you go to longer wavelength, about 3 meters, you meet the FM radio transmission that we are used to. And shorter wavelength would lead you to some radar devices that, that are here. So where stands the cellular uh, uh, radiation? It has 30 centimeters, and therefore it stands here in this scale. If we use a cellular phone, here we are inside a concrete building and inside closed rooms, and still you have cell cellular reception and it works, which means that it can penetrate through concrete walls. The penetration capability is uh, strongly dependent on the wavelength. So what happens if we take a 30 centimeter wavelength cellular radiation and stick it to our head and put it very, very close to our head? Well, the human head usually is less than uh, 30 centimeters. Therefore, you have less than one wavelength where your head is uh, put it, and therefore all your head is practically covered with the radiation. The radiation will easily, the cellular radiation will easily penetrate all or the entire head. Okay, we understand we have uh, electromagnetic fields, we have currents, how much is allowed? I must say that I think now an answer for this question is still not available from a complete pure scientific point of view. I think there is no consensus about it. But there is an answer from the FCC. One of them is this number, 0 0.08 watts per kilogram. This would be the average that is allowed in, for the entire body uh, absorption. But if you try to make a cellular communication operating with this number, it will be very, very poor communication and probably it is not practical. You will not have cell phone if this would be the limit you will have to live to. So there is another number, much uh, 20 times higher, 1.6 watts per kilogram. And this time, this number is allowed not as an average, but as specific areas where you can, uh, you can absorb much more. So this is the number, and this new number already allows decent communication, cell phone communication, as we know it. Good morning, and uh, my name is Nashad Mazi, and I will be uh, presenting the SAR results in, simulated, uh, in the test that we did in simulated brain uh, tissue under radio frequencies. In this case, we use dielectric liquid that simulate the brain cell based on dielectric properties. And uh, uh, the test 
has a, the setup consists of a robot and the telephone or the wireless device is put by the phantom that contains the dielectric liquid and communicates with a base and we analyze the SAR values. We look for a, uh, a distribution of the SAR values from a hot spot on the surface of the phantom and in depth into the tissue just to simulate or to study the electromagnetic wave propagating into this liquid. Typical values are, like uh, Dr. Anat said, are 1.6 for the head and 0 0.08. Uh, this is watt per kilogram for the whole body. Or is it possible to reduce the given SAR limits? So our first, the first test that was conducted at, uh, uh, at a certified lab provides up to 77% reduction with a body well card. And if you look at this, these two pictures, the one on the top shows an SAR value, a peak SAR value of 0.246 watt, watts per kilogram. And with a body well chip, the peak value is 0 0.054. And this is 77% reduction. I, uh, from a scientific perspective, I can tell you that 77% is a very, very interesting reduction. And I personally am really impressed at this moment where there is so much uh, debate on the harmful effect. I think it's a safe practice. And again, to present the body well cards, you just uh, put them on the back of a, your wireless device and get the benefits of this reduction. My feeling about this is that we do not know, bottom line, what's going to happen or what is not going to happen. When we started well, 35, 40 years ago, there was no such thing as a fetal alcohol syndrome. Now all bottles are labeled for pregnant women, you should not drink. It doesn't mean that every woman that drinks is going to have a child that has fetal alcohol syndrome. But you need to be made aware of the fact that this could happen. The same thing with tobacco. Yes, tobacco causes cancer, but it doesn't cause cancer in everybody. I have patients that are 90 years old that are still smoking and don't have lung cancer. But that hasn't stopped us from warning people the possibility that you can get cancer. What this body well chip does is give us a safety net for everyone, but more especially for our children.